I'm standing right outside what's going to be a brand new apartment complex, as you can see to my right here, in the Navy Yard metro region of D.C. This region in the past five years has become more and more gentrified as apartments, buildings, restaurants, you name it, all continue to go up and pull brand new families to the D.C. area. Exactly two years ago today, the Potomac River flooded this area of Georgetown, affecting these businesses that you see here behind me. But today, these businesses are back open again to patrons. Snowstorm Pax has been the biggest snowstorm yet on record for 2014, dropping over three feet of snow across the Northeast. We'll show you coming up how this snowstorm has caused many people to run to the store and grab a shovel to start digging out. I'm standing right in front of the White House where police have amped up security because a little six-year-old girl was tiny enough to slip right through the cracks of the front fence that you see here behind me. She ran around the lawn before police were able to catch her shortly after. Although not every GW senior is too happy about the choice of Chef Jose Andres to be the commencement speaker out here on the Mall in May, one thing every senior can definitely agree on is that they hope he'll show up with some food. For The Source, this is Emily Sporn reporting. After last week's deadly avalanche on Mount Everest, Sherpa guides are threatening to boycott for the rest of the season. Sherpas are mountain guides who brave Everest conditions to help groups climb to the summit safely. The avalanche on Everest killed at least 13 Sherpas and others are still missing. In other world news, President Obama arrives in Tokyo today to show his support for Japan and its increasing tensions with China over a group of islands called the Senkakis. China has been ramping up its military in Southeast Asia, and President Obama hopes to ease the tension between these two Asian countries. That's all the news we have for you this morning. Thank you for tuning into The Source, your home for news, weather, and sports. I'm Emily Sporn. Have a great day. One event is the highlight during April here in D.C. when tourists are taking pictures left and right. Children show you there is more than one way to ride a paddle boat and decorative pins are adorned on jackets. This event is the Cherry Blossom Festival. While at the event, I spoke with a park ranger who goes by the name New. He wears two hats as a park ranger and volunteer coordinator. New laughed off the stress of the event and described the importance of bringing volunteers in to help with the festival. One of the volunteers, Aliyah, wanting to remind tourists to be patient if the blossoms are not out yet. That wasn't a problem this year. The weather was a balmy 80 degrees, and tourists who visited this past weekend were lucky enough to enjoy the blossoms in peak bloom. I don't think they could be any uh, more at their peak right now, today, so I feel really fortunate for having the opportunity to see John, a visitor from Orlando, Florida, explains why his city isn't the only must-see tourist destination to welcome spring. Really gorgeous, really beautiful. We have, we have nothing like this. I'm enjoying the season so far. Ashley and Kirsten both took advantage of the nice weather to bike down. You know, today is a peak. It's a really pretty day. We decided to just bike all the way down here to Arlington. You can experience live music, great food, art, and of course, the beautiful cherry blossom trees throughout the D.C. metro region until May 2nd. For The Source, I'm Emily Sporn. Across the country, around the world. Disbelief was the first reaction. The JFK assassination dramatically altered the news industry. It is only fitting that the museum, the Museum of News here in Washington, is featuring how reporters covered that tragic day 50 years ago. Here in the Three Shots for Fired exhibit, we focus on uh, the story of the assassination and specifically how uh, reporters and news media covered uh, that tragic event. Jonathan Thompson from the museum showed me around the exhibit. As I walked in, a teletype machine from UPI caught my eye. UPI was the first news outlet to report President Kennedy had been shot. It's really when TV came into age. Um, you know, before that it had really been newspapers and radio had been the primary uh, uh, means of news gathering. 
Thompson showed me his favorite piece in the exhibit, the Bell & Howell 8mm camera Abraham Zapruder was using when he captured Kennedy being shot. There was also a board at the exhibit that asked people for their where were you moment when Kennedy had been shot or perhaps during another life-altering event. Museums are putting on the 100th uh, anniversary, you know, uh, perhaps someday we'll see some of these in, in those displays. You can catch the JFK exhibit at the museum now through January 5th. In Washington, I'm Emily Sporn.